We typically classify an applied research project according to what type of class of information we're seeking. If we're specific about this upfront, it may help us better select a more fitting agency partner for the project and or better choose a high fit methodology. The three classifications, exploratory, causal, and descriptive research. Exploratory research involves seeking net new learning, new unproven frontiers, or pulling back the curtain on hidden truths. Exploring might involve seeking insights about consumer imagery, assumptions, points of hesitation, or psychological barriers. Exploring may involve a fairly intimate or in-depth encounter with fewer consumers, not a quick and dirty fact check. We usually find when we are exploring, we may wish to use qualitative research methods. They don't produce numerical findings, but they do have a higher chance of providing those golden insights. For example, if we're about to learn about a category or consumer segment that's really quite new to us, or even though we've been serving that segment for a long time, we can check for something new to say or check if any new needs or views are emergent. Causal research is done to deliver insights in a narrower set of situations, typically pre-launch. Causal helps us to look before we leap. We have options, but we need to find out by how much one marketing option outperforms another, so we understand whether to make a change in our plan before launching, say, a new ad or pricing structure or promotion product, etc. Imagine a marketing manager needs to know, should we proceed to launch a new product? Vanilla flavored raisins. Should we change our ads to include a new tagline to move it from sweetness made smooth to elegantly sweet? Should we shift our media plan from 60% web, 30% TV, 10% radio to 70% web, 30% radio? And skip the TV. Causal often points us to market tests that let us see how a set of sample participants processes our concepts mentally and then acts. A market test can be tiny, such as a shelf test, or bigger, such as a theater test or a central location test, where we bring consumers in to taste that new vanilla flavored raisin product, or an at home prototype test of, say, a new pod speaker or a store panel test of a new peanut butter and hazelnut spread line. A market test can also have a vast scope, a citywide test market or a regional test market, whose results will be compared to those in the pretest period and those against the rest of the nation. We can even do simulated market tests with computer models to extrapolate what the results might be if we roll out a new marketing tool or approach. Doing a market test requires meticulous planning and yields lots of metrics, numbers, about brand awareness, store visits, market share, repeat purchases, etc. We typically also check to see how that new idea or concept impacts different types of people by gender, by age, by the brand they currently buy, etc. That's a lot of measuring. As causal research usually calls for an intensive study of numbers, another method that's quite distinct from a market test might apply. Conjoint analysis, a method where participants must choose between two or three simple multi-factor concepts one at a time. The third applied research classification is the one that encompasses the entire rest of applied learning. Descriptive is the most common of the three classes by far. Descriptive is used to gather insight into when they buy, when they use, which brands or products they buy, which channels they shop at, which brands they consider, which attributes they find compelling, where they buy, where they use, how satisfied they are, how often they buy it, how they use it, how they pay, who in the household buys, who in the household uses. That's a lot of territory. You might have already guessed at which research method is most often used to gather this type of information the survey. Whether an online survey, text survey, phone survey, paper and ink survey, 
whatever. Although some of this same information can be found via qualitative research, qual methods aren't usually our first choice to gather this type of information. We often want statistically valid information. What other method might work? Observation. Think of a website. We observe when they visit, who visits, how many visit, which device they use, how many page views, how long they linger, which products they viewed or in the cart, where they go after. Observation often gathers many of the same types of facts that surveys do. Usually, even more reliably and at greater detail. However, observation typically gauges just behaviors. Surveys can acquire information on behaviors and attitudes. Also, surveys are typically fully voluntary. Less risk of running into consent issues. Did you have my consent to gather that info? To use it in that way? To share it with that other trusted partner in that way? Are you safeguarding that data, my data? You may very well end up using a combination of both surveys and observation to learn what you need for descriptive research situations. But do factor consent into whatever you do, whether addressing a dilemma you classify as exploratory, causal, or descriptive, remember, rules vary by jurisdiction and they're sure to evolve over time. Just needing certain research learning doesn't give you the right to just go grab it up. Follow the rules, play nice.